Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, we have been looking at methods to tune PID controllers. So this lecture we will look at a method known as direct synthesis method. It belongs to a class of methods known as model based controllers wherein we will use the information about process model in order to come up with controller parameters. So as the names uh, of the method suggests, it is a direct synthesis method. What we mean by that is uh, here we specify desired response and back calculate controller transfer function. So, the, if you want to distinguish this method with the previous method uh, of heuristic tuning or criteria based tuning, in both those methods uh, what we do is uh, we essentially select certain uh, controller parameters so that they will give us certain properties of the response. Here uh, what we are doing is we actually specify the response which uh, obviously can may, uh, satisfy some of the performance criteria, and then accordingly we back calculate what would be the controller which will give you that particular closed loop response. So let us say for an example, so if we are talking about for servo control or servo problem, we know that the transfer function between output and manipulated uh, output and the set point is given by GP, GC, GV over 1 plus G P G C G V and G M. So we can rearrange this in order to, so let us say if G S is equal to some desired transfer function which we want based on the uh, response which we seek, we want to compute G C. So if you want to rearrange this equation, what we will get is <coughs> 1 over gs desired is equal to 1 plus gp gc gv gm over gp gc gv which is equal to 1 over gp gc gv plus gm So that gives you a controller transfer function as 1 over so what this says is if I use a controller transfer function which is given by this where this is gs desired i will get the closed loop response equal to gs desired so what uh, and if this controller this transfer function is similar to a pi controller you you will implement a pi controller if this looks like a pid controller we will be implementing a pid controller similarly for regulatory problem you can similarly <coughs> derive that If your GR is GR desired, then you can derive that the corresponding GC comes out to be GD minus GR desired over 
जी पी जी आर डिज़ायर्ड टाइम्स जी वी जी एम so that is a direct synthesis method it is uh, not really a tuning method it is a method of synthesizing a controller and we are going to use it uh, to tune a controller by such that uh, when you select a certain response from as g as desired or gr desired so that the resulting controller comes out to be either a p controller pi controller or a pid controller so let us take an example of a first order process let us say your process is first order process and we want uh, this particular process uh, to undergo a servo <coughs> response should be such that it is lambda s plus 1 where lambda is much smaller than tau so what we are interested in is we want uh, a perfect set point tracking so when you say gain is 1 so this gives me perfect set point tracking without offset and this lambda being less than tau means it's a fast response so let us say if this is our res desired <coughs> and for simplicity let's assume gm to be 1 and gv to be 1 so what we get is 1 over lambda s plus 1 this is gs desired is equal to gpgc over 1 plus gpgc so we can take the inverse of this equation <coughs> so we get lambda s plus 1 is equal to 1 over gpgc plus 1 so lambda s is equal to 1 over gpgc and gc is equal to 1 over gc into 1 over lambda s and gp we already know so this controller is going to depend on what is the process transfer function that's why it's a model based controller so this becomes tau s plus 1 over kp lambda s which we can simplify as tau over kp lambda 1 plus <coughs> one over tau s <coughs> so you can see that this is of the form kc 1 plus 1 over tau i s so this is indeed a pi controller with this being the controller gain and tau being the integral time constant so what direct synthesis method gives us is that uh, if we use a pi controller with a gain given by tau over kp lambda and integral time constant equal to the process time constant of tau then the closed loop response will be given by 1 over lambda s plus 1 so it will be a set point tracking first order without offset with a time constant of lambda so this is a simpler way to gate controller tuning uh, by actually specifying what is the closed loop response we want so let us take another example <coughs> let us say our process has a dead time so it's a first order plus dead time process and let's say we want 
g is desired of again a similar type lambda s plus 1. So, we have a dead time in the process, but we want the response which does not have any dead time. Let us see what happens. So, we have 1 over lambda s plus 1 <coughs> is equal to and again we will make similar <coughs> simplifying assumptions. <coughs> so, what we get is GPGC over 1 plus GPGC and we get lambda s which is similar to last time 1 over GP 1 over lambda s uh, 1 over and then GC is equal to 1 over lambda s into 1 over GP. So now let us substitute what we have as GP. So we get 1 over lambda s into tau s plus 1 over kp and e raised to tds. So what we get is very similar to what we had for the previous case. So we have a controller gain. and all this is multiplied by e raised to TDS. So, if we analyze this controller, what we are getting is this looks like a PI control with positive dead time. Actually, it is a negative dead time because for a dead time we get e raised to minus TDS which is same as future. So, if you invert this controller, what it is going to require is if I want to find out the controller input, it will be the steady state value plus integral 0 to t epsilon and then because of this dead time, it will be t plus t d. plus the error value will be at t plus t d. So, this is the proportional action, this is the integral action. So, what we realize is that because of this negative dead time, what we require is the future value of error. which is actually not possible uh, because we do not know what is going to happen at t plus t d time. So, this controller is impractical. And the reason uh, we are getting impractical controller from this directive synthesis is because uh, we are assuming or we are we want this controller to take action right away and this is a feedback control, it is going to take action only when the output has shown any effect to the input. Because of this dead time, the output is not going to show any effect till time of TD is passed. So, as that is the case, you cannot expect your controller to take reaction right away. You have to carry forward the same delay into your desired response as well. So, for a direct synthesis, <coughs> So, for systems with dead time, we need to carry forward same dead time in the desired response. In order to get practical controller. So, for the same case our g s desired should have been 1 over lambda s plus 1 e raise to minus t d s. Accordingly, if we des derive the controller what we are going to get is
So let us substitute what we have. Let us say e raised to minus t ds we approximate as 1 minus t ds so you will get gcs tau s plus 1 over kp lambda s plus 1 minus 1 plus t ds so we get tau s plus 1 over kp lambda plus t ds which is equal to tau over kp lambda plus td plus 1 over kp lambda plus tds so again you can see that this is a pi controller so this is a p action and this is i so it's a pi controller So for a first order plus dead time systems, if we properly select uh, our desired response, then again we can end up getting a PI controller. So this was for the case of dead time. Uh, similar thing will happen if we have an inverse response into our process. So if the process has inverse response, which means uh, right half plane zero, uh, then if we use a direct synthesis method, uh, it will be based on inverse of the process. So it will have one over GP into your controller transfer function. So that right half plane 0 will become a right half plane pole into your process, so the uh, into your controller, so your controller will become unstable. So for systems with inverse response, we have right half plane 0 as controller is proportional to 1 over the process transfer function controller GC will have the same 0 will become a pole will have a pole in right half plane so controller will be unstable. So such a controller will uh, not be a, will not be able to implement such an unstable controller because it will require infinitely large uh, amount of input as time goes to infinity. So for inverse response system, the desired response should also be also have the corresponding right half plane 0. So inverse response cannot be avoided uh, by simply cannot be eliminated by implementing a, any controller or a direct synthesis controller. So as long as we take care of these two situations, uh, the direct synthesis method can give you PPI or PID controller and the corresponding tuning will give you the desired response which was used to set up that particular controller. So we will take a short break here and when we come back we will look at a final method of coming up with controller tuning that will be based on frequency response analysis. Thank you.